I am just a little bit worried at the moment. No, not because we have the sunshine here in Scotland. Although it is a beautiful day, the sun's out. It is fresh, it is crisp. It is absolutely freezing. But I am worried that the big freeze that is on us at the moment is gonna kill off the beautiful little ceilings we have on the go here in the greenhouse. The onions and the sweet peas have all germinated, they've all come up, but they are tiny little plants and they are very much at risk of dying off if temperatures get much lower around here. So what do we need to do? I need a solution. I need a quick, a fast, a cheap, a dirty solution to get some heat into this greenhouse. You can see, just look at the windows, the glass, it is frozen solid around here. I don't have a fancy paraffin heater, a diesel heater, an electric heater, none of that. But fear not, I have seen, oh, albeit over the last couple of years, on various different YouTube videos and books I've read, things I've seen on different social medias, even speaking to people about a way of getting some heat into the greenhouse with just some stuff that you might have lying around in the kitchen, in the house, in the garden, wherever. And I had a good rummage through the cupboards this morning and I've been in the shed and I even found just what I was after behind the greenhouse to give us a solution to get some heat in here over the next few days when those temperatures are forecast to get even colder. And we've got some technology here to help us out because it's all well and good, me anecdotally standing here and I've seen other videos that do this. Build this thing, it'll heat your greenhouse. Let's get some technology, let's get some data that shows whether this actually works or not. So what are we gonna be using? First things first, this. We've got the little temperature monitor here from inside the greenhouse. Let me come a bit closer and show you that there now. <laughs> Ignore the high temperature on there of 17.1 degrees. I had to change the battery on this yesterday afternoon and I did it in the kitchen. So as soon as I turned the battery, put the new battery in, it picked up the temperature from inside the kitchen. So last night's low, we were forecast around here to be down to minus five. Inside the greenhouse, it was down to minus six. So obviously the greenhouse is gonna be degree or two warmer than what it is outside. So the temperatures that were forecast were much lower than we thought. And I'm a bit worried because we're forecast to be down to minus seven tonight. Now, the sweet peas and the onions that I mentioned before, they're okay, down to around about minus 10. But you know, when we're forecast minus seven and last night proved that it got even colder, I'm starting to get a little bit worried. What else do we have to help us out? We have got this, I'm very, very lucky to have access to this. And I'll show you this in a moment. This is a FLIR thermal imaging camera. And let me just pop it out there so you can see the screen on the back there. We'll turn it all on, have a look at it in a minute. And you can see the lenses on the back there. This is thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds worth of kit, but it will give us an accurate picture of what the temperatures look like in the greenhouse and whether the little heater that we're about to build works or not. Speaking of which, let me get set up in here and we'll come back to you in just a minute and show you exactly what I'm up to. So what have I been foraging for in the house? And just before we look at that, look, it is frozen even inside the greenhouse. Let me just scrape the, the frost off the inside there. You can see that's freezing in here. So I've got a few things. First up, We've got a lighter. This is a one I use for lighting the barbecue with in the summer, which it very much isn't. At the moment, you can use matches. You can use whatever you have in the house. I have got two tea lights. I will come back to these in a moment. Important information about the tea lights. I have got an old terracotta plant pot that I only emptied out last night. You can see there, it is still filthy dirty. I found this behind the greenhouse, but it is just what we need. And I found these very handy Plant pot stands, I'll come to them in a bit as well. And we'll talk about that, you don't need plant pot stands. You just need something that's gonna raise the height of the pot off the ground, but we'll come to this. First of all, let me talk about the tea lights. So these are just some little tea lights that I found in the cupboard in the kitchen. Not all tea lights are equal though. I have ordered some other ones that are gonna come depending on the shape and the size of the tea lights depends on how long they last for. Now these are, let me see if I can get this close to the camera for you there. You can see them there. These are pretty small ones. These will only burn for between three to six hours. Now I'm sure you can understand, 
if I want to do this overnight, that is not going to be great. Even if I come out at sort of eight, nine, ten o'clock at night, put them on, it's only going to burn through into the early hours of the morning. Then all that heat is going to eventually fizzle out and it's going to be freezing in here once more. But if you have a look on the likes of Amazon, you can get tea lights that will burn for much longer, eight to ten hours. I'll put links in the description down below. Go and have a look, see what you can find. There's all sorts of weird and wonderful ways of making candles last longer, making your own candles. This is very much a last minute sort of thing for me just to get some heat into the greenhouse. But I do have a bag of eight to 10 hour candles coming today, hopefully from Amazon, Amazon Prime, we'll get those delivered. And they should last me, I say, I'm gonna come out sort of nine o'clock, eight, nine o'clock at night, get one of those candles on the go, and that should see me through till I'm up in the morning for work and I can come down and check on the greenhouse and perhaps replace the candle if those temperatures have dropped and stay right down. That's the tea lights. Everything else is pretty much bog standard. Let's just have a quick look at how we're gonna build this heater. I'm gonna bring the camera down to the ground level in the greenhouse, and that's where we're gonna get things set up. This is the basic setup that I've got in the, the bottom of the greenhouse here. I found this old slab outside. I just wanted them raised up off the gravel here, just a little bit. So we've got them on top of the slab. Got two candles, you can do this with one candle. I'm putting two in here, because it is so cold in here at the moment. I just want a little bit of extra heat. We've got our three little plant pot stands that I found in the garden. Now, you don't need to use fancy plant pot stands like these. You can use anything. You can use stones, rocks, bricks, whatever you've found. The important thing is our plant pot here that we're going to use. So you need a terracotta pot. And let me just flip this over. I'm trying to do this one hand and I've got one hand on the camera and that is going to sit on top of our lit tea lights like that. And the heat from the tea lights is going to do two things. One, it's going to get funneled up through the terracotta pot. So you need to make sure that your hole at the bottom of the pot is unblocked and the heat can come out. Second, the terracotta pot itself is gonna get warmed up by the candles. It's gonna store that heat and when the candles do eventually fizzle out, this will still be hot and it will emit that heat over a short space of time after those candles have fizzled out. Now the plant pot stands or whatever else you have are important. You can see I've got this gap at the bottom here and you need this gap. If you don't have that gap, the candles will be starved of oxygen. In about two minutes after you've lit them, they will go out and they won't do anything whatsoever. So how are we gonna check whether this works or not? I mentioned the flare before. What am I gonna do now? Let's get the candles lit. I'm gonna take a step back. We'll see if we can somehow get the flare in the camera shot and we'll show you just how hot it's gonna get in here. So I've been away for an hour. And even though you can very much still see my breath in here, because it is freezing cold still, it is getting a little bit warmer in here. Now let's just have a look at the little temperature gauge. Earlier on, when we first came down here, it was about minus two, just, just under minus two degrees. So has it gone up any? Now it has gone up quite a bit, as you can see there. So when I want, well, that's just changed again. That's gone to 3.2 degrees. Now it has got tiny little bit warmer outside. That's the caveat that comes with it. The sun is slowly moving around, but there is nowhere near enough heat in the sun or outside for the temperature has gone up. It's only gone up a degree or two, maybe it's at the most out there. So the little chimney that we've created down here, the little heater that we've created, and it's given off that heat with those two candles under there is definitely making a difference in here. Now, the main thing to have a look at, let me have a go with the flow. We'll get it turned on and we'll see just exactly how much heat this little chimney that we've created is giving off. So how does this nifty piece of kit work? And unfortunately, you are gonna get my reflection in the screen here. Because it's sunny outside and I'm using two screens, it's gonna reflect. So you've got me and the camera as well as everything else we can see. I'll try and zoom in a little bit there and help you out. So you can see that the yellowy orangey colours are the warm ones. So you can see my foot over to the right hand side there, as well as the pot. So the bluey purpley colours are the cold ones, that's the ground, and the yellowy orange ones are the warm colours. So we can see that the pot depends where we are on the pot. If we move right into the middle there where the heat's coming out, it goes up to 20 degrees and more towards the edge. It was a little bit cooler there towards the edge of the pot. 
and we're looking at about you know 16 to 14 down to 10 degrees there so we're almost touching the gravel but if we move on to the gravel itself that drops right right down in temperature there for us so there we have it the little chimney that could so by using technology both the temperature monitor here in the greenhouse we can see there 3.2 degrees c in here at the moment and our great bit of kit the fleur we can see that this little sort of garden and heating hack is working a treat and like i said right at the very right start of the video there this is just stuff i have had lying around i haven't had to rush off to the shops and buy an emergency heater and stick it in here we've got a couple of tig lights an old plant pot and something just to raise that plant pot a little bit up off the ground to keep those temperatures up just by a couple of degrees and that's all we need just that safety blanket of a few degrees, couple of degrees overnight to stop everything from dying off. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you have, please think about subscribing. It's absolutely free. Just click the red box thing you can see down below. Give us the thumbs up if you've liked the video. And please let me know in the comments down below, how do you keep your greenhouse or polytunnel or sort of indoor kind of growing space, how do you keep that warm at this time of year? Anyway, that's me done. Thank you very much for watching, folks. And hopefully, I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.